city councilor here in the city of Vancouver. And uh, it's just a true pleasure for me to be here as uh, your MC tonight um, and to introduce to you Audrey Seymour, who is Asquiam First Nations, and she is going to be offering um, a welcome to us. Audrey, you are. Thank you, Adrian, for, for introducing me. And I always have to check out Adrian's shoes because if that is not wear the same size, she might be in trouble. <laughs> no matter where I see her, I'm like, oh, it's nice shoes. <laughs> so um, I'd like to say first, um, hi, Chika, to Lisa for inviting me to be a part of this, to be a part of the launch. Um, to be a part of her continued good work. And um, I warn you, it's gonna get a little mushy. I'm an emotional person, uh, especially especially when it comes to Lisa. Um, first, I will get the actual business out of the way. Um, and for, uh, yes, and thank you and the Green for Oops, always no. um, following what we now call protocol, but it's just the way we used to do things. We. We did welcomes um, first as a way to kind of vet people's intentions, ask um, questions, who are you, where are you from, what, what do you plan to do on this land, um, what are your intentions, how long will you stay and how will we benefit from your time here if you're allowed to stay. And it might seem hostile now, but if you look at um, the history of the land and the people, it's a really good way of keeping tabs and putting in the forefront of people's minds the way to conduct themselves and be respectful no matter where they go in the world. Think about those people and their ancestors and being um, considerate and respectful of their culture and practices because this is something we've moved away from. So to be invited to several green events, to do welcomes and to just be a part of it, it, it means a lot, not just to me, but to the ancestors that I stand here representing. My people, we've been on this land for over 10,000 years. Our creation story puts us at the first sunrise. And to me, that's not just a story. It, it, it's what I believe and it's what I feel. And um, to be included, it, it means a lot to me and everyone who comes with me. So, Mitzep Kwekwilam, Atana Shwetmathkwilamaf, Tamok, Tana Wail. Aik Gwanish Kwalo, and Skwetzi Kwetznala. Sklem Tanak Gwanish Kwek, Tanitsanak Kwekwilam. Welcome to the unceded lands of the Musqueam people. It gives me feelings of great joy inside to be here with you today. My name is Clem Tanat. It's also Audrey Siegel. Um, I am from Musqueam and I'm so proud every time I say that, that I can say that in my ancestors' language and that I get to feel that pride and connection. And I am the granddaughter of the late Stephen and Selena August. And when Lisa asked if I would um, if I would be interested, I think, would, would, would you be available? I think she's like, even if I wasn't, I would clear my schedule. Because to me, um, I'm not here just to specifically support Lisa as a green candidate. I'm here to support Lisa in the work that she does as a human being. The work that she does publicly, but the work that she does behind the scenes that so many don't know about. Um, it's been just over a year since we met, both running with COPE for the last election, which seems like it was 10,000 years ago. Um, it's been such a crazy year. And instantly, I didn't, I didn't just knew I liked Lisa. I knew that, I, I, knew that um, I wanted to know her and that I wanted to spend time with her and that I wanted to learn and that I wanted to share. Um, she has a light, she has magic, and she has um, a magnetic energy and, um, Personally, she has been extremely supportive of me in uh, probably one of the hardest, I don't know what the right word is, incidents, situations, events, um, probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to deal with in my life. Um, uh, well, I was at an event and a police officer hit me in the face with my own drum. It's all on video. Uh, I don't. Uh, it was at an event to call for the end to, of violence towards Aboriginal women that leads to the murdered and missing women. And um, I was peaceful. I was singing. And this 
this is what happened. And I've experienced and been around a lot of violence in my life. I've been around a lot of beauty. I've been around a lot of peace. I've been able to share it in so many cultures. And recently, in the last six years, reconnecting with my own Musqueam ancestral culture. But this incident, um, it shook me. And it, it messed me up. And um, one of the first people to come to me and to offer support and love and um, hugs and kind words was Lisa. Um, I'm still processing. And part of me knows so many other women have endured so much worse. And it's not a comparative thing, but um, to know that um, Lisa, with her own experience and with her family, um, knows knows uh, firsthand what what I might need or what I might be feeling. The support that she showed me when I had to give my statement. Lisa was again the first one to offer to come with me, and she stayed with me, and she and she she wouldn't leave until um, until I assured her that I was all right. Um, that's not for political gain. That's because she's a good human doing good work. So with everything, you put that together with what Lisa does publicly, the work that we know that she's done. I support Lisa 100% in what she in what she says and what she does and in who she is. I can't say that about many other people, especially people who are working um, in the political realm because the history of politics is, you know, is, is, it's not pretty. So Lisa is helping to change the face of that, as are so many of the other green candidates that, um, that I've been so blessed to meet and to work with. And that Lisa supports the First Nations, not just in a tokenism kind of way. That, that, that means a lot to me. To be invited because of who I am uh, is one thing, and to be invited because of the work that I do is, is another amazing thing, but to be invited because we do good work together as just, again, as human beings. I like bringing everything back down to the level of, of a human being. It doesn't matter where my people are from. It doesn't matter where your people are from. I respect you, and I honor you, and I honor your ancestors and the work that you do until I have a reason to believe or do otherwise. And Lisa has only ever proven that um, she has a beautiful heart, and she has amazing... Um, seriously achievable goals and that's possible because we will work together and we will unite and we will not stop until the reality that we are working towards is actually here so to lisa i say um for the work that that you do for the amazing um gifts that you share with all of us and on a very personal note i really um we were having a conversation earlier. It's not like we owe each other anything, but I am forever um, moved and touched by the support that and the love that you have offered me um, when I didn't even really know how to ask for it. So um, it means a lot to be here, and I'm so happy to be here with all of you and um, knowing that you uh, feel the same way and support in your own way. And together, that's how we do it. We each share our magic. We each do whatever it is that we're good at and that's how um, we keep moving things forward so to finish i would love to sing uh, there's all kinds of songs i could sing for a welcome but um i would love to sing and i would love to invite anybody else who wants to join me to sing as well and you can stand you can sit either it's it, it's it, I'm, I'm happy comfortable with both for lisa i would love to sing um the women's warrior song it is a song of honor it's a song of respect it's a song that Martina Pierre of the Little Lock Nation wrote that came to her in a sweat. It's a song only to be sung for strength and never in anger. And at a lot of the events on the front lines, it's a, it's a hard thing. And when, whenever we're there and I'm, and I'm standing beside Lisa and we sing this song, I only feel strong and I feel beautiful and I feel powerful. So I want everyone here to feel the same way. And um, feel free to sing along, clap. Please do join me. And my voice is a little bit crackly, warbly. Um, so, if we're all singing together, I can take a breath or cough, <laughs> and, we can, and we can get through it. <laughs> all right.
to help you laugh and to have fun and to rest every day because it's a long road ahead of us and we need you um, as rested and um, as ready uh, to put on your warrior face as possible. So, yeah. it's Epta. And it's why I think it's so remarkable to have Audrey here giving us a welcome and he said here to be our candidate. Um, there, there was a non-competitive and truly sort of democratic debate experience that happened with these two women, and not with all the candidates uh, that were in the election. Um, but it was more often than not a situation of saying, I really want to acknowledge that that point that Audrey said, or that Lisa said, or that Adrian said, it's a great point. I really, you know, that's, that's the way I feel too. And to add to it, this. And you know, really, isn't that what government's supposed to be about? Isn't it supposed to be, I mean, yes, we run for parties, but isn't it really about dropping the partisanship? And Elizabeth May is a model of doing this in Parliament, who, you know, calls on people of all political stripes as friends um, to say, let's work together to solve these problems. You know, had these two women been elected, I'm sure that's what we would be doing. Now we have to get her elected to yeah. Parliament. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but just to note that there is a different way to do politics, and that's why this election is so important. There's a different way to do politics that is not combative, and that is not mean-spirited, and that doesn't drive down voter turnout and turn people off, but instead actually get, engages people from the grassroots up the, and, and engages people across party lines within Parliament to do the very best in, a, in terms of legislation and action um, towards creating a better future for our children. And goodness knows that's what we need. Yeah. So, I look into a hearing from uh, Lisa and Elizabeth acknowledge that we've got some other candidates in the room who are also running federally. So Wes Regan is here. Yeah. 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 He has lived and worked in the communities of Cumberland and Vancouver East. He's an urban geographer. I didn't know he shared that. Yep. That's great, Wes. Community economic development professional and environmentalist. Until recently, he was the founding executive director of the Hastings Crossing Business Improvement Association, Canada's first social innovation BIA. Running, I believe, in Calgary. Calgary Mindapur. Calgary Mindapur. Mindapur. New, new, new one. Right? New, yeah. new, new riding. Yeah. The, yes. The incumbent is uh, Jason Kenny. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but interestingly, you you had a little conversation with me about one of the pledges you want to make to the voters, 
in that riding. Why don't you just say that what that pledge is? Well, in 2011, I ran in West Vancouver, and I made a pledge to the, the voters there that I would uh, accept the, the wage of a, a standing Canadian soldier as a wage if elected MP. The same pledge is going to be uh, given to people in the riding in Mindapur, specifically because I'm running against the Minister of Defence. The remainder of the money that I would receive as an MP, and I'm hoping to appeal to fiscally conservative people, is that that money would be used to uh, build solar panels on public buildings in the riding with equal uh, pub private funding to do so. So that, that's the aim of, of running in that riding uh, against the Minister of Defence. The advertising for this event um, that there was, uh, oh, Michael, and Michael Barkowski's here. That's awesome. as well um, and background in in social economic development really I mean very well founded the organization you founded was mm -hmm. Pacific, Pacific, Pacific Economics. right Pacific Institute for Ecological Economics um, and if Jordan is my co-founder like <laughs> Peter you're running in and Maple Ridge and Maple Ridge right great so thank you for coming out um, and many of you saw in advertisements that there were other candidates that were going to be here tonight, um, specifically Claire Martin and uh, Lane Corby. Uh, but because of the anticipated rip drop tomorrow, and I don't know if you've been hearing this, but it looks very likely that indeed um, the Prime Minister will be calling the election tomorrow. Uh, they've gone to Victoria to be present at the launch tomorrow morning. What time, Elizabeth? We'll be there at 6.30 a.m. And I'll be there, too, if anybody wants to come. But Stephen Harper has alerted us all to remain ready, but nothing is confirmed. So the official confirmation is promised by 6 a.m. Eastern Time or 3 a.m. in B.C. He's ever considerate. <laughs> so, uh, just before we get going with uh, the other, other parts of the Wes, would you like to come up and one of, the, one of the wonderful talents of Wes is that he is a musician, along with being like right there in his community on, on social economic development. So, um, oh, you're good with the chair? Yeah. See? That's great. Oh, we do have a live mic if you want a live mic. Yeah. That's great. Do you want me to oh, get you some adjusted? Oh, your first yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, that should be great. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much, Adrian. Uh, is it is the mic picking up anything? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I moved to Vancouver about 20 years ago, as Adrian mentioned, and uh, I moved here to pursue a career in the in the performing arts. So to be an actor and musician, I ended up touring around North America and Japan professionally playing music, and, and uh, Vancouver's been good to me. It's been an incredible place to make friends and, and um, explore my expressive, creative side. And uh, I, I didn't think that it was going to be such a central issue in my campaign, but I'm very happy to say that I played at Claire Martin's launch. I played at uh, Brad Nickerson's launch in Port Coquitlam. Uh, I played the the Metro Green Party rally in North Van, and I've been so inspired by the experience of being a candidate and running and what's going on in Canada right now and the political landscape and, and all the issues we're facing that, that I'm writing songs like crazy again. And so I just, uh, I'm happy that Lisa invited me here tonight to play, just uh, I'm going to play two songs for you. Uh, I think you'll, you'll pick up quickly in, in the lyrics uh, that they're very topical, that they're about uh, what's happening right now. Actually, I want to try an experiment here. Do you want to hear a song about the recent forest fires and drought, or do you want to hear a song about uh, LNG fracking and sites heating? <laughs> Big smiles for me. Right on. That's gonna go 
up to Instagram. Instagram. I've been Instagramming a lot lately. It's so fun. I pretend I'm a studio photographer. Okay, so we're going to do fracking. Fracking and sightseeing. I played this one at Claire's launch. Put your hands in the water. Take a drink from the stream. Lay your back on the banks, yeah. And baby, dream a dream. Let's say the brooks they babble. Yeah, they babble on. What does the river tell you? Tell you to move along. What does the river ask you? Or does it sing a song? Honey, open your eyes before I'm gone. Come on, open your eyes. You see, the world has changed. We've gone from silent strings. To a holy wage, and yet machines keep digging, digging deep into our soul. Faith to move the mountain, just to burn the coal, and crack rocks beneath us where the vapors lay. Just to light the towers Where vipers make their pain Where vipers make their pain What does the river tell you, tell you, tell you now? What does the river tell you now, tell you now? Let the current take you to the riverbed And like a rolling stone, you know we'll turn to sand Where there's a storm that's brewing at the river's mouth Where the ocean rises, both in the north and south both in the north and south. What does the river tell you, tell you now? What does the river tell you now, tell you now? Whole mountaintop removal in there as well. Yeah. So, um, my wife really likes this new one. Uh, this one's really about the drought. And I don't know if you noticed, so I, my degree in geography comes up in music all the time. I'm talking about fluvial sediment deposit, orographic <laughs> uplift, <laughs> other terms. But um, this one was inspired by the, the droughts. Um, you know, we live in a rainforest and the rain is so beautiful and comforting and, and nourishes this land and uh, it's been really troublesome this summer just uh, how dry it's been and how tangible uh, the impacts you know of our uh, activities are on the climate and, and just how immediate the um, the urgency seems right now so the droughts made everything really apparent and I sometimes just feel like I just wish I could make it rain just uh, climb to the top of the mountain and drag the moisture up with me and, <laughs> and have it come down but, I was 
once a child from childish things. But now I'm bricolage, mosaics and strings. What I chose to put aside, what I chose to keep, like a picture of you. Cause life's too short and we're in to the deep. Climb that mountain I'm gonna make it rain I'm gonna talk with God Yeah, if it's all the same Don't you know, girl We're all upside down But can you feel the sky Pushing us into the ground land of falling waters, there's a wall that won't come down, like the rocky snow-capped spine, where the rivers and streams divide, lay me down by the stakes and ribbons, tie me up to the ancient tree, arm in arm with my brothers and sisters, like a river let loose to run free. Climb that mountain I'm gonna make it rain I'm gonna talk with myself Yeah, if it's all the same Don't you know, boy We're all upside down But can you feel the sky Pushing us into the ground Yeah, if it's all the same Don't you know, girl We're all upside down But can you feel the sky Pushing us into the ground Into the ground Jobs. Thank you so much, everyone. It's an absolute pleasure to be here to support you, Lisa. I thank, um, thank you, Audrey, earlier. The the Warrior song is one that, that in particular, I get really excited about. The, the um, downtown east side homeless soccer team, the women sing that song after their games, and we march every year. Uh, to remember and honor the, the families and, and the, the missing women uh, in the downtown east side. And that song uh, always is a powerful song. And so I was honored to be able to play my songs and share some of my story after Audrey got the chance to welcome us here. So thank you. That's great. using the mic, but I don't need to use it if you would like it. If it's better for you to hear, yay on mic, no yay, mic. Yay. 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 Okay, that's good. I'll do it. <laughs> um, so first of all, uh, thank you for the music. It's just a genuine pleasure to realize that we've got um, talent within the, the party and you know what, music just to connect us in a way that, that um, words goes beyond words, it's words and and. and. Um, and I also want to thank Jordana. Jordana, is she in the room here? Jordana, she left? Oh, so we were welcomed with piano music by uh, by Jordana, which was very lovely. You got you on the board. Um, and it's, yeah, a real pleasure to have that too. Another reminder for people, cell phones, um, keep them on for photos or tweeting, but can you turn your ringers off so that it, uh, we don't get disturbed by uh, phone calls coming in? Um, and, that should be it, I think, for um, before it goes. 
So it's my pleasure now to introduce to you, um, well, there's more than one star of the evening, but really the star of the evening, Lisa Bear. Uh, I'm very excited about Lisa Ryan in this writing. I think she will be a fantastic MP, and that, uh, that it's through our effort that she will get there. So I thank you all for coming tonight. And by the way, thank you all on this incredible, beautiful summer evening when there's so much else happening. And we will be ending in time for you to catch the, um, uh, the fireworks. So uh, 9 o'clock or so is, is our um, uh, end time. And thank you to all the volunteers. I see a number of them in the room now. Thank you, everyone, who put food together for tonight. And welcome to people and uh, arrange the whole thing. And we'll be cleaning up afterwards. Uh, so Lisa. Lisa, why I'm excited about her running is because I think she is that genuine, community-connected person that people in Vancouver Center love. And she's got roots in this community. She used to own a um, art gallery down in Yale Town. And at the time she had the art gallery there, she was doing fundraising out of it. Fundraising for community um, groups, local artists, uh, HIV AIDS programs. Um, so she was all the time, even as a businesswoman here, giving to community and incorporating community into her work. Um, and that has gone on um, and through her volunteerism, uh, being on the board, uh, I think twice on the board, of, uh, elected to the board of Van City, um, on the board of uh, Canadian Center for Policy Alternatives, um, BC branch, um, elected twice, mayor of Bowen Island, um, served for nine years on committees at Metro Vancouver and on the board of Metro Vancouver. I mean, she does give to the community. And through her work, too, um, and I haven't listed everything. You can find out more from her. Uh, but, uh, you know, you really see her passion for social justice, her passion for economic justice, her real, you know, she is the go-to person on trade deals, these international trade, de trade deals, and how much they under mind um, the kind of community-based local economic development um, that serves us all so much better uh, than the corporations in countries outside of uh, uh, Canada. So, you know, with that, um, Lisa, why don't you come and share why this is your launch. This is, you know, you taking off on that path um, to, uh, to MP for Vancouver Centre. Well, and thank you so much for coming out. I, I was thinking there'd be me and not even my family because they're up in Whistler. <laughs> so, like, everybody was out of town this weekend. But I'm so pleased to see so many friendly faces and I really, really, truly am grateful that you took the time out to come and be with us this evening. Um, I won't talk for very long. Um, I, I also want to thank all the volunteers and staff people who set this up and worked very hard to pull this together. And to thank the people who came, uh, Jordana and um, Audrey especially for her welcome. Thank you to Wes for the songs. Audrey's song also really resonates with me and for very similar reasons. The, the annual Working Miss Women's March that we sing that song and we stop at the intersections and it's just, you know, it's just such a, it's such a scandal, it's such a, a crime that this goes on year after year after year, and yet we still don't have the political will to bring together a public inquiry, an independent public inquiry, to find out why this continues to happen. We've got Stephen Harper creating this huge surveillance mechanism in Bill C-57, 51, sorry, but they cannot bring themselves to find these murdered and missing women and who the, who the people, the perpetrators of those crimes are. Who they're going after with these bills, it seems like they're going after people like Audrey, who is working day in, day out to protect her own family. She was the protector of Cessnia the ancient Musqueam village, 
down in uh, the bottom of Fraser Street where they wanted to build a private liquor store and bar and a parking lot over the remains of their ancestors. Could you imagine if there was a proposal to put up a private liquor store, bar, hotel on Mount Pleasant Cemetery? I think a few people will get upset. But Audrey stuck it out for almost a year, may have been more than a year, and she won that battle. And I have so much respect for that woman and for the kind of people who take on these seemingly you know, hopeless battles. And they do it with the passion and they do it with the kind of intention that is good. It is it's for a greater good. It is not for their own aggrandizement. It is only for what is right, what's right to do. And she won that battle, and, and I'm so very proud of the work that she's doing now with Greenpeace. She's trying to stop the shell um, drilling in the Arctic. She was out on the Esperanza ship, getting right in the way of that of that big uh, drilling break that was going up there. So, seriously, all my respect to Audrey Siegel and all the people who really are putting their freedom on the line, given that what our RCMP and our national security agencies are considering, and, and they have this in written policy, that anyone who challenges industry that is considered or deemed by the government to be important industry, important to the nation, can be branded as a terrorist. And I think that's really scary. And really, that was what pushed me over the top to decide just after we'd settled down from the last campaign, like, do I really want to launch into another one? But that was what triggered me. And when Hedy Fry voted for that, I thought, I have to. I have to be in this riding. I have to stand up for that. It also speaks to the other issues that we're dealing with in this, this area, which is the oil tankers that are running through Burrard Inlet. Many people don't know about that. Our indigenous people know about that, First Nations in, in the area. There are people up at Kinder Morgan who put their freedom on the line up on Burnaby Mountain, and Lynn Corby was one of those people, and, and I'm sorry she isn't here tonight, but much respect for, for Lynn Corby, who, you know, as a, a, an SFU professor, you know, she was also putting her career in jeopardy. So we have brave people in our midst doing such courageous things, and I want to stand by them, I want to, run this campaign with the best of intentions. Um, and I think back, you know, Audrey encouraged me to think about my ancestors. And my grandmother and grandfather um, were early days ecologists. My grandfather wrote the um, outdoor pages and the poetry pages for the Vancouver Sun. And um, my grandmother was one of the early Voice of Women members and spent her whole life working for Voice of Women for Peace. So I learned from my grandparents how important it is that you, you have, have your values clear and you proceed through life with that good intention of, of meeting your own values, not compromising them, always rising where you can meet those stated values and not finding excuses to do it the easier way. When I was little, I went to Norgate Elementary School, and we were like a lot of elementary schools. We had to have a portable on the side to sort of have the overflow. And we were lucky enough, like living next door to the Squamish Reserve, to have Chief Dan George and Dominic Charlie come to talk to the Squamish kids. And we had to with the children in, in Norgate Elementary School too. And so those kids got to get out of language arts class to go and listen to the stories and the teachings. And they let me go too, because I was best friends with three of them. So I was sit on the floor across legged and the lessons there were so clear. They're all told in brilliant stories that you remember. But you learn to, one of the strongest messages I'll, I'll just convey is that you don't speak. You don't speak on behalf of your people. You don't even speak for yourself, but especially on behalf of people you are charged with representing, unless you're clear in your heart, unless you have managed to leave that baggage behind. Whatever it is that is holding you back or, or dragging you down or that, 
thing that was bugging you about that person over there, you leave that all behind because you're called to represent and you do it with a clear heart and a clear mind or you don't do it. And so, uh, yeah, I try to live up to that. I try to, to do it and I, I fail miserably too often, but I, I, I will continue to strive to get it right. There's um, another bit of, of my history too. My grandfather, when he was working at the Sun, was up in the map room at the top of the Sun building. I don't know if you all know it, but it's a beautiful building on Camp Street. And this was on the day of the day they read the Riot Act. And there was a labor demonstration. Um, there was serious trouble. And people were very poor. People were, were desperate. And people were coming to hear labor union organizers speak, and socialists, socialists were just as you know, feared as then as they are now, and, uh, and, and uh, criminalized. And we just celebr or celebrated, we didn't really celebrate it, we, we noted the anniversary of the death of Ginger Goodwin over in Vancouver Island. And there, there are labor organizers who have been targeted, who have been killed. We need to recognize that as well, that this, these are the things that are again being challenged. And we need to step up to, the, to protect those people, protect the right to dissent, that it should not be criminalized. My grandfather saw the people gathering he saw the militias riding in on horseback from all the different streets coming in. So there were four, I think, streets leading in, and they were converging. They were, it was early day peddling. This is what they are famous for in the G20 um, meetings in London. Um, the peddling is very effective, but a lot of people get seriously hurt, and a lot of people get packed off to jail for days. So my grandfather pulled guacamole, so he ran downstairs ran to get around the corner of the, the um, cenotaph area, get around the corner to tell the leader of the um, union organization that had called this what was up. And as he was getting very close, he said he was within about 25 feet to break through the back of the crowd, and one police, mount, I guess they weren't even Mounties then, they were the militias. They came in on horseback, grabbed him up by his belt, and hoisted him up on the Horse and said, where the hell do you think you're going? And dragged him back out so we couldn't warn them. And then, all the problems. So I think we need to remember that people have come before us, people with courage, people have stood up to the kind of, of draconian legislation, the kind of, of mean-spirited treatment that this government has been laying down on us for the last 10 years. Really. It's just. And, and longer, you know, I think that we have we have a pattern that has gone on and it's coming to a crunch and I think now is the time where we're ready to stop it. And I'm looking to all of you to help me do that. I will need people to stand on street corners with me. I love talking to people on street corners, but it really helps to have somebody there beside me. So if you can spare an hour every now and then, um, let us know, please. Um, we also need to do some serious canvassing. Now, if the writ drops tomorrow, we'll be able to get into these buildings. And this is a challenging riding where you know, we're not going to get a lot of lawn signs out there because there aren't a lot of lawns. But there are you know, a lot of balconies. There are a lot of people who can show their support <coughs> from the city. And I would love to see the city have a green wave all over it so people know, know you're not wasting your vote. You're joining in a vote for something positive for change, for something that means something to the people who are struggling right now to protect our environment, to protect our civil liberties, to really see a future for our children because climate change is real and it's a serious problem we have to address with great urgency. So if you feel the same way and you want to get involved in any way, please let me know, let Jordan know, let um, Jackie know. We would love to have you join us, and I think we can make it a bit of a party too. We're going to have some volunteer parties and make it fun. Come have some fun with us, and let's get some serious work done, changing the systems that have brought us to where we are today and taking us to where we want to be tomorrow. Thanks.